All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us here. More importantly, thank you for being here tonight. So just so you know, the cameras are live. We're going to be on television for the next two hours from 7 to 9 o'clock. We're going to go right through to 9 p.m., and then we'll, go, we, we'll end it, and, but we're going to stay here. We won't necessarily all run out for about another half hour. Our goal tonight, just so you know, is to answer as many questions as we can possibly answer. We didn't come here tonight to make any speeches. I brought this incredible group of men and women, our cabinet here, whom you'll meet in just a little bit, um, and, and what they're here for, and, and, and what we're hoping tonight will be like. But what we'd really like to do, and we've done this now, this is tonight is our seventh town hall, as we start each one off with a pule, and I can't think of anybody better and I know you all know who he is, Pastor Alan Cardenas tonight to start us off. Pastor Alan. All right. With that said, thanks again for coming, everybody. With that said, let's ask God's blessings uh, and, uh, as we gather here tonight. So with that said, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing us together. Lord, we pray that you would just touch us and bless us. Help us to come together as a community to just find just amazing, awesome solutions to the pain and the problems out there in a community. We pray that, uh, yeah, you just touch us and bless us with your aloha at, in such a way that at the end of the meeting, all of us will walk away inspired with the hope that comes from you. So, Lord, thank you for bringing everybody here tonight, and thank you for blessing uh, our time here together. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Is Diego Carranza here? I don't see him. Ordinarily, this is a point in the evening when we uh, introduce you to some of our youth commissioners. It's one of the things that we decided we wanted to do when we first came into office. And, um, but I don't see him here, so he's not going to be up. Has um, Captain Andrew Ring showed up? Yep. We had somebody from the military. We wanted to have a military representative tonight in anticipation of some of the questions you might ask. So they're not here. And I don't think any elected officials are in the room yet. When they come, I promise to introduce them. I'm anticipating that Andrea Tupola will be here uh, along with a few other people, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's kind of get into this. This is your evening. Our, our commitment to you is to try to make this worthwhile. If you're in this room tonight, I'm going to make the assumption that you love where you live here. This is your home. This is your community. That you have really serious concerns and other things that you hopefully want to have a voice to. And we want you to have that voice tonight. Um, so let me... Uh, say something here before I turn it over and meet the team behind me. We didn't come tonight to make any speeches, okay? We want, we want to answer questions. And, you know, to that extent, I do not want to be rude to anybody. But I can tell you from experience that sometimes when people get up to a microphone, they want to make a long speech. And we don't have the time for that. And, and not only that, um, we want to answer as many. So kind of the request, if you will, is when you get up here, I understand that you might have to have or set some context to your question. I get that, and that's okay. But I don't want to be rude, but I, I will tell you, if you get a little bit long-winded, I'm going to cut in and say, what is your question, please? Is that fair? Okay? And, and, um, and, and that way we can answer as much as possible. And we've had some really good success at pretty much fulfilling that um, in every one of the previous six we've done. Secondly, um, there's no need to form a line. Uh, you, we will get to everybody, and because if you form a line, people in the back can't see, it's not good, it's, you know, so what I would ask you to do is, you know, we'll start off with the first person, and then, you know, if, you're, if you wanna come in your chair, just come up afterwards, we'll, we'll, we'll balance it out, or maybe come up here, sit here, that's good. And so far, we've had really good compliance this year. The long line, if you will, just it doesn't work. It's, first of all, it, it just, it's not cool. So we'll just do it that way. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to ask for is that we get the fact that um, in a town hall meeting like this, that there's a lot of passion. 
and, and, and we appreciate and respect that passion. All I ask is that we keep, we keep our discourse with each other tonight civil. We will be civil back to you, okay? Um, but we want, to, we want to make it like that. And that's, that, those are the only requests. No long speeches, no lines, and let's keep it civil. Other than that, you can ask us anything. Nobody's here to filter any question that you might ask. We didn't say, write it down, we'll take a look at it and see if we want to answer it. You come up here, it's open mic, okay? The, the caveat to that is that you, we reserve the right to tell you the truth, which is what we're gonna do. It may not be what you want to hear, but we didn't come tonight to pander. We came tonight to answer questions and to be as honest with you as we possibly can. Now, we're not gonna solve a lot of things in this kind of a forum. Two things are going on. One, you're gonna have the benefit of making, the, making a contact with the, with the expertise in the city, which is why these men and women are up here from a leadership standpoint, and the follow-up. And as I think I told you, not only is Olelo, are we live on Olelo right now, but also we record each and every one of these sessions. So we do that follow-up. We did it last year, and we're gonna do it this year. So just know that as well. Councilwoman Andrea Topola just walked in the room. Councilwoman Andrea Topola. <laughs> Councilwoman Andrea Topola, I don't want to do this to you, but before we begin the program, I want to give you the microphone and say a few words. I realize you just walked in, and, but I know that you're not shy. Test, test. Is it? Test, test, can you hear? What's up, Nana Cooley? How are you guys doing? Oh my gosh, it's a long day. There was so much traffic. So, welcome. Here we have the mayor and 10 million people sitting in front of us. So I hope you guys have 10 million questions to ask. Um, you know, I think for me, like the three main priorities, and I've worked with the mayor and, and the administration, really is public safety, homelessness, and housing. There's a lot of other things that I'm working on, but those are top, right? And I think with the homeless outreach that we've been doing, and I, I see people, I see Kalahoe West people, there's a lot of churches, a lot of organizations that have been helping out with that. And we've specifically been going from, you know, Kauai Hona Depot just moving, 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 and trying to house as many people as possible. So can we just put our hands together for those who are helping to house our homeless? Thank you. I see River of Life walking in, and they're also a place where we host our homeless outreach. Secondly, with housing, you know, it is, it is the thing we have very, very little deeply affordable. So not just affordable, but deeply affordable. And, and I think that the only new one that's coming up, which everyone's been asking me about, is the one in Kapole. And the studios start at 500, which that's like deeply affordable. But we still have a lot of need for that. And lastly, you know, I, I'm glad that I see Major Beckley. I see HPD here because, let's be honest, crime's on the rise. Last year we had shootings every single month, if not a murder, as well as the shooting or a stabbing. And so there's a lot that we've been trying to do with D8, but as well with the mayor. And so I just want to thank the uh, city administration. I will say that I do make a lot of noise for the things that we need. And I relentlessly go after what this community deserves because we have been for too long a dumping ground and we can't be that anymore. We can't. And I know the mayor stands by that. He stands by trying to provide us with the resources that we need. So... Ask the tough questions. We have the guys, and he's the guy that can give the answers to the tough questions. So thank you, Mayor, for the time. Welcome, One more round you. of applause for no, our Mayor, thank please, you. No, for thank being you. here. No, no. We love Andrea because she's a fighter, and she represents you well, and I'm really pleased that she's here tonight. Captain, I'm going to bring you up, if you don't mind. Captain Andrew Ring, who's Chief of Staff from Joint Base Pearl Harbor, just to make the introduction. Um, in fact, sir, you could, if we find a chair, you could sit up here tonight in the event that we have. One of the things that we're really proud of, uh, that we looked at our relationship with the military as a real strategic opportunity for our community. And we've been able to forge really good relationships with the senior commands at all branches. And it really helped us, especially when we were dealing with the Maui, I mean, the Mililani wildfires. Uh, but there have been a number of other things as well. So. We've asked the captain to come tonight, maybe a brief introduction about who you are, what you do, but you're gonna be here tonight to be our, be our resident expert on anything that comes up military. Is that okay? All right. So good evening. I wanna th thank Mayor for inviting me and thank for a chance to be here at this evening's town hall. 
My name is uh, Captain Andrew Homer Ring. Right now I'm the Chief of Staff for Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. So essentially the, the mini mayor of all things Pearl Harbor, running the base and all the operations that are there. I've had the privilege to live in Hawaii for almost the last 20 years. Uh, my kids have grown up here, went to high school here, but now left to go to college on the mainland flying in tonight. So if you ask, you know, is it a big deal for me to be here? Uh, he lands in 30 minutes and he'll be sitting there at Honolulu Airport until I get back to get him. So, uh, but we are trying to uh, have more outreach and the, and the mayor is helping with that, trying to be a better steward, having better communications with the communities because uh, the communities not only are our neighbors and we owe the, to, to be a good neighbor to the communities around us, but also everybody who works on the base lives and grows here in Hawaii. And so we have a responsibility not just to the neighbors, but to the people we work for and to care and provide for them. And so anything that we can do to improve and be a better partner with the, the islands that we have here and remain a privileged tenant of living and working here, we're going to do what we can. So thank you very much, sir. So you, you can sit right over here. It's great. Okay, so without any further ado, let's start over here. And we'll start with you, Major. And we're just going to go through and meet the people. Aloha. I'm Major Gail Beckley. I'm the district commander for District 8, which is the Kapolei, Makakilo, Eva Beach, all the way to Kaena Point, so the whole Leeward Coast. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Thompson. I'm the assistant chief from HPD. I am oversee the regional patrol bureau, which is basically from Makaha all the way up through the North Shore, all the way through Kahuku, and it ends at um, uh, by Hawaii Kaisai. Good evening, my name is Brian Gallagher. I'm the Deputy Director of the City's Department of Design and Construction. What we do is we work with the various city departments for, uh, we do the heavy construction um, as, as opposed to kind of the, the various maintenance. It's, it's road repaving, it's, it's drainage canals. Uh, we fix and repair up um, police stations, fire stations, parks, uh, various things like that. Thank you. Good evening, aloha. My name is Andy Kawano, Director of Budget and Fiscal Services. Um, I oversee the accounting function, treasury, real property taxes, um, purchasing, and uh, payroll. So we handle all of the money coming in and out and uh, look forward to meeting, continue to meet all of you and answer your questions. Thank you. Aloha and good evening. My name is Stephen Courtney, Deputy Director for the Information for information technology. My office provides the computing resources for these departments. We also provide applications to the public so that the public can be get better access to the city services. Thank you. Aloha and good evening. Edward Los Banos, Deputy Director, Department of Community Services. We administer uh, all the federal money that comes through uh, in the way of human services, homelessness to housing, uh, aging, workforce development. We also administer the city's uh, small grant program. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight. Okay, aloha kako. My name is Kehau Pu'u. I'm the deputy director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. So we are responsible for all of our parks, park facilities, um, also community gardens, our city trees, park trees, recreation programs like Summer Fun, which is coming up and a um, lot of citywide events like yesterday's May Day at Kapi'olani Park. Aloha. Aloha, everyone. I'm Kevin Oje. I'm the Deputy Director for the Mayor's Office of Housing. Pleasure to be here. Thanks. Aloha. My name is Ka'ili Trask O'Connell, and I am the Executive Director of BOCA, which is the Mayor's Office of Culture and the Arts. Thank you so much for having us here tonight. Mahalo. Aloha, everybody. I'm Donna Puna of DPP, Department of Planning and Permitting. I'm also the mayor's rep for the YNI Neighborhood Board. Good to see everyone here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kira Shushom. I'm the chief data officer for the city. I am uh, here in a, the role of trying to help streamline many of these departments from a data perspective. So I'm the back end person. Thank you for being here. Aloha, everyone. My name is Sam Moku. I am the mayor's homeless coordinator. Glad to be here. Aloha. Good evening, everybody. My name is Roger Babcock. I'm director of the Department of Environmental Services. We take care of sewage and rubbish. Nice to see everybody this evening. Thanks, Roger. 
Good evening, my name is Ben Sullivan. I'm the Deputy Director for the Mayor's Office of Climate Change, Sustainability and Resiliency. We work on renewable energy and energy efficiency. We try to reduce greenhouse gas pollution across the island. We also get ourselves prepared for climate change impacts, which we all know are coming. Thank you. Aloha, everybody. My name is Lloyd Yoninaka. I am the Executive Secretary for the Neighborhood Commission, and we oversee the neighborhood boards. I got a couple of my guys out here. You might recognize my staff. I, I know we have a lot of neighborhood board members here. The, can I get a raise, a raise a hand if you're a neighborhood board member? How about a hand for these people? Yeah. Thank you very much for serving. And sorry, I got to do business while I'm here. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for coming tonight. My name is Keith Suzuka. I am the Deputy Director for the Department of Land Management. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dita Hollyfield. I'm Director of Enterprise Services. I oversee the Waikiki Shell, the Blaisdell Arena, the Honolulu Zoo, and the six municipal golf courses. And just such an honor to be here tonight. And great to see my friends from the Raceway Park back in the old days. Good to see you guys. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Formby, and I'm the Managing Director. Good evening, everybody. My name is Krishna Jaram. I'm the Deputy Managing Director. Thank you for being here tonight. Aloha. Uh, I'm Andy Sugg. I'm the Mayor's Chief of Staff, and I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Reed Yoshida, Assistant Chief of the Honolulu Fire Department. It's a real pleasure to be here tonight. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Amy Asselby. I'm the uh, Executive Director of the Office of Economic Revitalization. It's nice to see some of our partners here from the Waianae Economic Development Council. And if we can help any small business people or anyone wanting to be a business person, Kim is right outside the door with some information for you. But we are here to make Oahu a good place to do business. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Hiro Toya. I'm the Director for the Department of Emergency Management. Uh, we're responsible for coordinating the city's disaster preparedness and response. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bugs Baggio, Assistant Director of Human Resources, and our primary job is to make sure we have enough people to assist everyone here with what they need to do to service the city. So if you're interested in working with us, we have Darcy outside the door. Please go see her. She has a whole list of jobs that we have open. Thank you. Hello, good evening. My name is Ian Santi. I'm the Deputy Director of the Emergency Services Department. That's the emergency EMS, Ocean Safety, our Health Services, and our core program. Hello, I'm Roger Morton. I'm the Director of the Department of Transportation Services. We provide you with public transportation. We provide the bus, the handy van, and of course our new Skyline system. We're also responsible for traffic engineering, for traffic signals on the island. Uh, state does most of the, owns most of the systems on Farrington, but we actually operate almost all the traffic signals on the island. We also do bike paths, we do pedestrians, we do complete streets. Uh, and I have the pleasure of sitting beside someone who's much more well known than me, the Executive Director of HART. Thank you, Roger, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Lori Kahikina, CEO and Executive Director of HART. So thank you, thank you. Um, so we're responsible for constructing the rail system. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Erwin Kawata. I'm the deputy manager at the Board of Water Supply. I also have the pleasure of serving as the mayor's representative to the Nanakuli Neighborhood Board. Thank you all. Aloha mai, uh, Kako, uh, Ernie Lau, Board of Water Supply. Aloha, everybody. Aloha everyone, I'm Warren Mamizuka, the Deputy Director for the Department of Facility Maintenance. Uh, we take care of all the roads, street lights, street signs. Uh, we actually uh, perform all the street, uh, street maintenance. So during the month of June and July, we'll be at the Ulehaba stream uh, cleaning that. So I just wanted to make that clear for everyone tonight. Thank you, <laughs> mahalo. Thank you, Warren. Aloha and good evening everyone. My name is Harold Ned. I'm the uh, Acting Public Communications Administrator for the Department of Customer Services. 
Our oversight responsibilities include the uh, satellite city halls, the driver licensing centers, and uh, public communications. I'm happy to assist with your questions tonight. Thank you, Harold. And as I said, if anybody were to walk in the room, Senator Kurt Favela just walked in, right? He's still here. Did you leave? There he is, right there. Senator, thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, lots of talent up here, lots of knowledge up here. I will try to answer if it's a question direct to me, uh, but based on your question and our need to know, we'll just know I'll be calling up on our people. So who would like to come up first? Come on. We'll get to you, I promise you. Don't worry, we'll get to everybody. And would you please identify Aloha. yourselves? That's the only other request we have. Aloha, everyone. Samantha D. Court. I am the chair of the Nanakulima Ili Neighborhood Board. My question is pertaining to the Wainai Police Station. Um, thank you very much for completing the fingerprinting process. I do believe that that helps to bring more officers to our district to patrol. But I wanted to ask, uh, what is next in the process? Can you give us a short-term goal and a long-term goal to uh, completing the Wainai Police Station? Yeah. We can answer that too, but Major, why don't you come on up? And, but Mike, I'm going to turn to you on that, or, or who? Uh, who are you? That's a very good question. Um, we are processing prisoners now at the Wai'anae Station. We're still working on our second level. I think we just had a meeting this past weekend, and, uh, and they'll they'll address that part. Um, but at least we're still, we're processing it like we used to before. We processed probably about like 60 um, since March 12th, I believe, when we got the machine. Um, so I think they'll, they'll, they'll yeah. mention that. Now, I should say one thing. This man that you're about to hear from, Mike Formby, he was very uh, uh, subtle in his introduction. Mike is the managing director. And in the city, all the departments report to the managing director. Mike reports to me. That's how it works. He's our frontline guy. I said in football terms, he's sort of like our starting quarterback and the head coach, only he's a pretty damn good starting quarterback. Okay, Michael. Thank you, Mayor. Where's Andrea? Is she still here? So Andrea Topola, council member, put $2 million in the budget for the Waianae Police Substation, and, and we've actually released that money, so thank you for adding that to the budget. We had a meeting yesterday. The first 300000 is going to the planning and design of the second floor facilities, and then the 1.7 million will be to build it out. And one of the things I learned yesterday, and I think Mayor might have learned this too, is that we didn't know that the second floor was built without a chiller. So they actually have to buy the air conditioning unit for the second floor in order to build it out. But that project is underway, and so we look forward to getting construction underway as soon as possible, and thank you, Andrea, for the council ad. You know, we've done a tour of the building, and we understand sort of a half-finished building has its own, not to make a bad pun, chilling effect on the community. Um, and it's our intention to build that building out. And at the same time, the good news is we're getting an uptick in our recruiting with police. We've been very open and transparent about our shortage in police officers. Uh, we're feeling encouraged about the future and the road ahead. Uh, but I can promise you, out here in the west side, in that particular police station is not an afterthought. We know how critical that is to the well-being of this community as Andrew just talked about in public safety, for all the priorities that we have, and every one of these departments is a priority, if there's an overarching priority, number one is public safety. Please know that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, who's up? Edward. Hey. Aloha. Aloha. And welcome to Hawktown, Nanakuli. <laughs> you know, I was raised and born in Nanakuli. My family, I got my brother here, Manada Ed. Uh, my family came here in the 1930s, so I just wanted to let you guys know how deep-rooted I am and my family in Nanakuli. Okay, first of all... So I do, I, do I make the introduction of Ed Warner, or do you do that? You, you did it for me, Mayor. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, okay. But, yeah, Ed Warner. But first of all, I want to thank HPD and Major Beckley, Major Tanaka, and the Traffic Division. I'm with DK Movement. It's, I'm against fathers against drunk driving. We got mothers and I'm fathers. My son Kalana was killed in uh, 2015. <laughs> graduated from Kamehameha High School, graduated with our, um, with his daughter, our, our uh, chief over there. So, <laughs> you know how strong I'm, I'm, I'm for safety? This is it. 
You know, on the 27th, <clears throat> we brought sign waving to Nanakuli. I've been bringing them every time. You know, it, it doesn't matter to me who grumbles. I don't care. If you got a problem, you know where I live. Don't bother me. <laughs> but I just want to thank HPD for supporting and for saving lives. We may never know how much lives we saved that night. One, two, or three. I'm not too sure if five guys got arrested, kids not buckled in. It's, it's about safety, man. And like, like you said, it's about safety. But that is said and done. I, you know, I can address each and every one because in things that we need to get done in Anakuli <coughs> and things that we already got done. First of all, I wanted to see if there's any chance on the city coming up into our homestead and taking over our roads, not saying own them, but maintain them. I know I talked to John. John's not here, eh? John Nouchi's not here. Roger's here. Yeah, Roger's there. I mean, it's this, you know, we, we want some accountability on our roads over, over here, up, on, on the homestead. You know, as Hawaiians, we always get shown last, our community sometimes, you know, I'm not mentioning it. <clears throat> but that's what, if the city can right. do that. So let's get to that question, Ed. Okay? Okay. All right. Roger. Well, the... Uh, Jane might be, or Warren might be better at this one than me, but we do maintain streets that are privately owned, even by Hawaiian homelands. Uh, and we, you know, our policy uh, for streets is that we, we take them over if they're dedicated to the city, if they meet city standards. Yes. Uh, that's, that's our rule. But beyond that, we will maintain streets. We have a few streets that uh, we have uh, are in the process of being reviewed right now in the area for taking over maintenance but I'm, I'm speaking for for DFM yeah, let's, really. let's have um, let's have Warren come up thank you Roger hey uh, thank you good question yeah so uh, you know these roads back here uh, is actually owned by the state you know uh, Department of Hawaiian, Hawaiian Homelands yes. right but uh, you know if, if, if they're like Roger said right it's supposed to be turned over if it was dedicated back to the city it has yes. to meet certain standards but uh, if a memo came in from the state requesting for, uh, you know, some, some assistance from the city for some improvements, uh, yeah. you know, we can actually uh, take a look at it, uh, have our team come out, and hopefully we can uh, do some, maybe some mill and fill, maybe some pothole patching yes. and some repair. So uh, I can get with you, give you my card, and, you know, we can start a conversation. Thank yeah. you. I know I work alongside with Ed Sniffin, you know, I, I sit on a transportation board with DOT, and I, I try to find ways to make it safer, you know, not only in my community, but in different areas. You know, I, I hate to say, but I was responsible for the speed humps you guys had to come through in Nanakuli. <laughs> we put that up. We never care who in Grumble. Ed, I talked to Ed, it was to do with emergency, and we got it up. That's how fast we got it. We need speed humps in second road. Mm -hmm. That's why if the city can take over, it would be good. Okay, one of my biggest, <laughs> biggest, he's talking about landfill, okay. right? You know, we, we're not Choe people. You know, we, uh, Okay, so Ed, I'm just going to cut you off and tell you that we're on record of saying we're not going to put the landfill out in the west side. Yes. Okay? We, we, we're going to stand by that. We've made that commitment. Yes. All right. Now, just to give you some perspective, though, since we've been in office a little bit more than three years. You know, the issue of the landfill came up right away, and once we cleared a lot of the stuff that was going on with COVID, which was a lot of the first year, we formed a landfill advisory commission, yes. and they evaluated six sites. <clears throat> and, um, and they came back to us and said that uh, after reviewing all six sites, they wouldn't go forward and recommend any, yes. anyone. And just prior to that recommendation, a thing called Red Hill happened. And Ernie can speak right. to that or whatever. Yeah, but I can tell you in three plus years of being mayor, the subject of water has never been more prominent in my life than the subject of water has been as a result of Red Hill, the result of the aquifers, as a result of the options that we were left with. We then turned to the military that I just said a little while ago for some help for the lands that they owed. And the fact is we just announced recently after hearing from Admiral Aguilino, the head of Indo-PACOM, yes. that YPO was off the table. And that was the only one. The first, uh, the first possibility was Lua Lua Lay, and we said it's in the wrong neighborhood. Not a possibility. We weren't going to twit it in the yes. west side. And the second was in Bellows. That was a non-starter for a lot of reasons. 
and wipe POs out. So as of tonight, right now, we have a extension on Waimanalo Gauch. We are in serious consideration and conversations with some other alternatives. This is akin to pulling a 50,000 pound rabbit out of a hat. Maybe that's an exaggeration. This is not an easy thing to get done, but we're determined to get it done. So right now we don't have that answer. There are some possibilities, but we're not gonna put it on the west side. Okay, um, thank you for that. Yes. Another thing I was involved with, Act 73, right? I should have said one question per person. I gave wait, wait. you two, okay, okay. but I, because I, I don't want to take the air yeah. out of the room. You can come back and ask okay. another one. I just Let's, wanted to address Act 73. Yes, the, Act 73. Half mile buffer zone. Act, Act 73 is a challenge for us. That's just yes. made it more so, okay. you know, and that just adds to the degree of difficulty. So imagine all of our aquifers, all of our water supply is on the ground. Yeah. Then on top of that, you have Act 73 with the buffer zones, which really makes challenge that much greater. And okay. we've exhausted the possibilities, yes, at least at this man. point right now, yeah. okay? Because I know the challenge on our people that have been suffering, since is <clears throat> on the federal government side, right, that people that live within the one mile have 10 years less than the average that live on the outside of that. It's not us saying, it's the federal government saying. Yeah. But you know, I, I, I'm just here to stand up for the keiki that cannot fight now, and for the kupuna that cannot be here and fight. That's all I'm here. Wow. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to keep Nanakuli as beautiful as I can, like the old days. Right. So. so when we came into office, just real quick, COVID was the big thing. And the definition of public safety that yeah. we just talked about took on a whole different meaning. Yes. And suddenly we were dealing with a disease that none of us could have imagined would be as lethal as it was. Fortunately, we got out of it in Hawaii yes. with good, good numbers. But yeah. the danger was there for a long time. Okay. That same mindset about about landfills and the possible exposure and is right up there in that same thing about health and well-being of people from a public safety issue. It's not just all a police matter. Yeah. And that's why we're taking it as seriously as we can, Ed. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for your leadership in the community. Thank you, Ed. Hello, I'm Mary and, uh, and your team, your quarterbacks, hey. fullback. But I'd like to take this time. You to are? Uh, Mo, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry, My name is Austin Salcedo. I'm from the west side. Yes. I've been here for over 63 years, sir. Yes. You know, born and raised here. And these places have changed dramatically. Keao Beach Park, I remember you, Mayor. Being out there, Sam Moku, yep. Andrew Topola, Laura Thielen, being out there at Keao Beach Park, looking at the, what the chaotic look of it all. Took the years, we had came out with a uh, resolution. Andrew came out with the resolution 22-151 to improve. We had secured $750,000 for the chain barriers that's around there now. The beautification of the park is there. Nobody's driving on the park no more, destroying the uh, sprinkler system and everything. But I'll command you on your team that's under you. You're the first mayor had done that, sir. I command you. you. Okay. With that said, sir, also. There's a lot There's more. a lot. There's a lot more. There's a lot more of the type of bad behaviors. Yeah. Last year, during a uh, town hall meeting we had in Y and I, I met with your quarterback, and I asked her. He asked me actually a question. Austin, what is attracting the bad behaviors in this area? So I tell you what, we was working on the team, and I took your half back there. He walked with it. I'm sorry, guys, everything. for the football. Mm -hmm. I could have come up with okay. a different sport. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Michael Farmby. Yeah. Krishna Jaram. Yeah. Okay. This is a good supportive team that you They're have. Yeah, great. We went out. My wife and I. We, we worked with the legislature. They came out with a uh, Senate resolution 53 mm -hmm. that will actually comb and create a uh, working group with the Department of Health to see and to work with the county to develop a working group. And that's what I want to ask you for all the. Uh, group living facilities that's around this island, but more so on the west side that we're concerned about. Yes. Okay? We're wondering, why are they, are they ending up at our beaches? We have no idea what's going on. So SR 53, I put that in their hands already, but I asked you, Mayor, to create this city on the city county side, a working group. I nominate Krishna, I nominate Donna Puna, I nominate Sam Moko, plus two more neighborhood board officials from each district to be on this working group to collaborate with the Department of Health um, uh, Alcohol okay, and Drug and Abuse right, Division. Austin, this is great. Michael, is there anything you want to say to this? Krishna does. 
Uh, Austin, I like it. I, I like it. I appreciate that, sir. Hey, Mr. Sunset, it's good to see you. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, so we've already reached out to DOH. We've let them know we're ready to join the, the working group as soon as, as soon as they're ready to stand up. I'm sure Don is willing. I'm sure that, that Sam is willing. So we'll, we'll join in as, as soon as they're ready. Thank you. And the nominees for the, on the neighborhood board, I got Philip Garnab on here, and I got Richard Lanford if he's over here. Okay. But I want to give another thing to uh, Mayor. The bad behaviors, we had, did a study. The intersection, because your shortfall of HPD officers is way too down. Right. And they they're, are facilitating all the 911 calls made into our area, uh, particularly the, this commercial area where the O'Kernets, the Gordon Macau Valley and Farrington Highway, the beach, and 7-Eleven. We took a study, sir. 2023, 762 calls, 911 calls, was dispatched to this intersection area. What is we are studying right now? What is the attraction of these bad behaviors? Because one call can consist of four squad cars or more. Yeah. That's taking precious resources just to this one location. So Austin, since you're up here, yes, sir. You know, volunteering some of these people and wanting to put a commission together. And since I've been out here now multiple times on neighborhood watch walks, why isn't the community doing more? The police can't do everything. That's right, sir. So why don't you guys deal with it? Oh, we did, sir. Up in Nohulio Road in Kalawaha, there's a business that's coming I mean, I over here. I believe in taking back your community. No, that's it. What we did was we created a petition. There, there was a business operation that's coming up in Kalawaha and Nohulio. And we... We, you want to address that, sir? I think, I think if you've got bad be if you've got bad behaviors going on, and you want to deal with it, okay, and you want to deal with it. Say that again. What are we here for? I just said we don't have police for everything. That's all. I just, you know, we're just talking about that. You have an officer right there. You talk, you, you're talking about a lot of bad behaviors. I'm simply telling you the communities everywhere, and even communities on this island, deal with that issue. That's Mayor, what neighborhood watches are about. Mayor, we took a pro proactive approach rather than being reactive. We took a petition signed by two streets because of this mm -hmm. Kailua and Kaniwe operation that's bought property, agriculture property in there, trying to make clean and sober houses for 18 to 25 year old individuals. Right. On our street, there's no street lights and everything, sir. Okay. So we created a petition. Your office managers, they got the copy of this petition. Our Andrew Tupola, councilwoman, stood by her community and supported this petition. And I, to everybody else, I have the petition in my hands. Nohulio, Kalawaha. They want to get the shelter and rise into our area, but without any city permitting process or protocols. They bought the property first, then now they're asking forgiveness now, later. That's a wrong, wrong turnaround. So I have the petition. You folks want to get involved with this, come to me. I'll have my petition ready for anybody to sign this. Right. This is a proactive approach, sir. I appreciate that, Austin. I like that. That's what I'm encouraging. I'm encouraging that. I understand. Because government can't do everything. We're trying to be as open, as sensitive in everything we can possibly do. But I know this finite amount of ability or resources, and I'm simply saying, when you deal with bad behaviors, you're, you know, I, I would tell you, you guys can help influence that. I tell you what, that's all thing you have to do is ask the question and we work with your team and support of, especially okay. with well, Major good, Gil Beckley. Good. She's I, appreciate, awesome. I appreciate your leadership. Thank you. That's thank all you, I have, Austin. sir. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Oh, marijuana. Thank you for your support for downsizing marijuana. Yep. With our district house representative, 45, he supported that thing. Yeah. That would have destroyed my grandchildren. We I'm took, you saw where we came down on that. Oh, we were very oh, strong. Oh, oh, oh. Very good. I applaud Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Good evening. My name is James Cowles. Hi, James. Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. And all the board members over here, thank you for showing up. I got to say, you're the first mayor that I have ever known that comes out to the communities. All these other past mayors. They could care less. They don't come out here. But that's, not, that's not my question anyway. Thank you. But my question is the lifeguards. Yep. I have family as a lifeguard. And I feel 
accepted. Now, this is my opinion. I feel that they should be a standalone entity. We agree. <clears throat> no voter ballot, no voter, anybody that don't put it on a vote for a vote, just put it out there. Reason why I'm saying this, because right now I see and I hear and I talk to a lot of lifeguards out here. They're having problems right now. The, I'm not downgrading the EMS because they do an outstanding job also. But with the two, two entities together, the EMS has taken all the money away from the lifeguards. Because right now, the lifeguards are out this side now. What they got to do is they got to go all the way into town, take parts off, the, off their uh, jet skis, and come out here and fix them and get the jet skis running. And I feel, okay. I feel that's not right. So James, I really appreciate this question. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. I'm gonna turn it yeah. to Mike and then based on what Mike says, I might add a few more things. <clears throat> We're very much in favor. I said it during my State of the City back on March 14th. Mm. We spent a year with a task force evaluating that. The strong recommendation, the clear recommendation was the time we'd come to split EMS and ocean safety. And only that, over the last couple of years, We've been very proactive with ocean safety in helping them expand our workforce so we cover dawn to dusk, a lot of other things that we did. Yeah. I'll let Mike answer it, then I might want to say something. There are some things I'm precluded from saying tonight because suddenly this thing has become a cause celeb in the newspaper. Um, yeah. That's not the reality of the situation, I can promise you. But I'd just like and to say one thing before it goes over to you. Okay. Um, my opinion is, Mr. T Titchen, I've never met the guy, I don't know who the guy is, but I feel that he should be put back on the job. He, okay. did, he did a fan, a lot of the, all of our lifeguards out this side support yes. him 100%. Yes. And I feel he should be put back on to help, I, help support uh, these guys. James, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, just a little bit of information. Councilmember Topola has been a big, strong supporter of a standalone department, and we have other people in the audience. Raquel Achiu is here. Raquel, raise your hand. Huge supporter of a standalone department, been <coughs> fighting for that for years. <coughs> the mayor and I did stand up a task force. We went to the first meeting and the last meeting. At the last meeting, there was a unanimous recommendation for a standalone department. The quickest way to do that is through the mayor's reorganization power under the charter. And that's what Heidi Suniyoshi recommended in 2021. And that's what the state legislature recommended two times in 2023. And that's what we're going to do. And what Councilmember Topola is helping with is that she's going to put the formation of the oversight commission to the voters because neither the council nor the mayor have the ability to form a commission that oversees a department. Only you, the voters, can do that. So it. I suspect it'll be on the ballot in November, and you should vote yes that you support an oversight commission over the lifeguards, and that commission will then interview and do a search for the chief of the department, and they'll pick that chief, and that chief will sit on our cabinet. And as for John Titchen, that process that he's going through right now is a 30-day process max, and so we'll see how it comes out. But. You know, Mayor and I have been very supportive of ocean safety the entire time, and we've been very supportive of John Titchen. Yeah. But we need to go through this personnel investigative process, and it takes 30 days at the max. I know you've been a big supporter of the lifeguards, and I've, I know these lifeguards out this side, they risk their lives every single day. These are the best day. watermen in the world. Yes. The water out here yes. is the most challenging in the world. Yes. We have. I have yes. profound respect for our life guys. Yes. And, and I can't talk about a personal matter publicly, but I can simply tell you that what Michael said is exactly what we want to do. There are limitations to my power. So once we got the, full, the recommendation from the task force split, I wanted to simply split it. We're not against the commission. We're not against that. They can put it on the ballot. We wanted to expedite it using the mayor's authority. Somewhere in there, that got really misconstrued, and that's all I can say right now, except we will continue, just as we are with HPD, just as we are with our firefighters, and just as we are with ocean safety and the EMS. In the spirit of public safety, these are the people, when the yeah, chips okay. are down, yeah. that you count on being there to save your life or the life of someone you love. Yeah. So we get it, I yeah. promise you, James. There's no, there's no we, we, we got, when I talk about respect, I have great respect. 
for our, for our ocean safety people. Okay, I got a couple more questions, but well, I'll do yeah, it later. Come back, come I'll back. I'll I want to get people yeah. in here. Okay, no, thank no you. problem. Okay, but I thank you very much. I appreciate James, it. James, thank you. Thank you for kind words, Mr. Ganaban. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Um, this actually question goes back to um, Chief of Staff of Pearl Harbor, um, and it's because of housing. The city and county and the state of Hawaii are short on housing, sir, and so. We know a lot of the military are offered BAH to go live off of uh, off-base housing. So we want to know if there would be a partnership that can be done to allow empty military homes to be available for civilian, not government staff, but civilian staff to offset uh, the need for housing. The best answer I can provide for that, so uh, if, if you're not familiar, all the, all the military housing that's on the island of Oahu, we turned over to a public-private partnership, and right now the company that runs that is Ahana Military Communities, and they control the housing. The military is just a partner in that in terms of we work with them to, to validate their budgets every year and how they're managing the occupancy rate. I do know that there are some communities, like out in the Pearl City Peninsula, where they're allowing either government employees or retirees to move into, but I'm not aware of any situations where they've allowed uh, any civilian member to make that application. But I'm happy to take that back to the OMC leadership. They meet with me every week, and I'll let them know that there is a desire out in the civilian community, because I do know sometimes there is occupancy that they're not filling, and they're making efforts to get that through the military but I'll let him know that there is probably a desire from the civilian side if they could make that available to advertise that effectively and let that be known. Yes, because that would be definitely helpful in helping offset because as your new military members come in every four years, their occupancy increases on the outside community. And so while the inside community, military housing community is decreasing. So that I think that would be a helpful with the offset, immediate offset of what housing crisis that we may be having in our area. I understand. I'll take that back to our community. Thank you. That's and then we'll you, follow up. Thank we, you, Mayor. We will follow up with a specific answer. And, and Mayor, just, just heads up. Go ahead. When you give the Waina and Nanakuli boys permission to do violence I know what violence, I'm saying. Okay. I know just what understand. I'm saying. Just, I okay. just don't want, I yeah, want and to. And I know sure what I'm good. saying. Okay. You know, that's the reason why I'm saying it. Okay, boys, you guys because know. Because since when do you have to succumb and have yeah. bad people get their way like that? Yeah. Since when? I understand, sir. I understand. Okay. okay. Beyond that, I can't say anything else. Message delivered. God bless. Hi, my name is Zeb Jones. Hello, Zeb. I'm here rep representing people that can't represent themselves because I can't find a parking place for handicapped people. We're in a minority out there trying to find a place to park. I see people come in and out that got. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these people. You know, I can't get out of my car. My wife. She goes in the store. I stay in the truck. I give up. In some states, they haul cars off if you don't have a parking, mm -hmm. a valid parking sticker. They charge $500. There's nobody checking here. What's wrong with it? Right. And I appreciate that they're there, but just sit there and watch who comes and goes. You know, shit, I can't get out of the car. I don't have any, I can't find a parking place. You can go in the store and come back before I can find a parking place. Number two, All right, let, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, we, I want Roger to address that. Let's, Zeb, stay there. It's okay. Sir, I know you, I know you're hurry. Let's Roger address that though on the handicapped parking. So it's, I, it's I know that you're, you're, you're talking about commercial disabled parking spots, right? In shopping centers and stores, places like that. Just so I understand. And, uh, and you're talking about the enforcement of that. Uh, HPD can enforce that. I think there, are, there were set up uh, some, uh, some mechanism within the disabled community where people were, in essence, they were deputized to, to support that. And I, I certainly uh, would, would do what we can to support it, too. Uh, it, it makes me sick, too, when I see people that are in disabled parking spots that you, you know, that, you, that just don't look like they have. I, I run the handy van, and I, and I did it for many, many years. I know, I know kind of, but I, I also learned that there are a lot of people with disabilities where they're not as visible 
all the time. And they get the, they get the placards through the state. Uh, I'm sympathized, but that you know I know that both HPD it's a large fine if you're parking uh, in a in a in a disabled parking without a proper permit. A lot of them, a lot of times, I see a lot of uh, permits in the car, and I'm not sure who really got got them. Whether they got them for for grandma or for for what, but uh, I don't know what I can say other than uh, you know that if you if there's a specific spot, let let us know and we'll talk to the chief. Yeah, HPD could could put on 50 more officers if they just enforce the fines on people that don't belong there. Number two. Uh, I'm a 100% disabled veteran. It took me 54 years to finally get the VA to give it to me. You know, a lot of states give us 100% uh, break on license plates. We get 45 here. We gave 100% of us, not 45%. So what's what is the question on that? Why can't we get why can't 100 percent veterans get a break on part on our registration for our cars? All these other states do it. Okay, is Harold, it, you want to address that, that at all? Poor? Active duty pays twenty five dollars. Harold, I don't know if you're prepared to answer that. No, but what I can do is I could talk with you offline about. Um, the, a path to a good outcome for that question. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's not asking that's a lot for what we gave. No, look, and I just got back from Washington, D.C. last night, and part of my three days there was dealing with the Veterans Administration on VASH and on homeless vets. And actually, we were doing very well with our homeless vets in Hawaii, but yeah. still yet, um, there's more, much more to be done. And those other considerations, like you're talking about, Zeb, we can certainly look into and we should talk to Harold afterwards. I mean, I look. That's that's actually probably at a federal and state level, but to some because we we actually just collect the money for the state when yeah, it comes well, to Yeah, well, EG supposedly signed the law, but what happened? He got cut down to forty-five percent. Uh, it's not a lot of money to you, but we have to live on what little sir, crap the VA gives us. Sir, Try I get to live it. on that. I wouldn't trivialize the amount of money. I get it. I do. Right, thank you. Thank I, you. I gotta go. I can't sit here myself. All right. Thank you, Seb. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're James Pierre Monaco, senior concerned parent, grandparent, and great grandparent. And what's your first name? James. James. Yeah, Monaco. You know, we have a problem with this thing called zoning. Why do we have that word called zoning? I came in here in the early 60s. It was rural country and agriculture. Today, we have all of these long houses from, Maka uh, from Nanakuli to Makaha. And then they just want to approve them. What happened, Mr. Mayor? Well, the zoning question is, is really, should I go to Don on the zoning, or it's and really a state type of thing? Don, come oh, on. OK, uh, but, but wait, let's, let, let's, let me, let me, let's let me, answer your first question. Why do we have zoning? OK, right? but, but let me tell you the problem with that zoning, yeah? Okay. The problem with the zoning is police, fire, and ambulance, yeah? Because back in the 60s, before anybody came into any community with, with, our, with our councilwoman. Yeah. You know, before anybody came into a community to develop anything, police, fire, and ambulance, and the schools were, were, were you know, they come. James, they, just make sure you talk. Make sure you oh, talk to the microphone. That, yeah. So what they did, Mr. Mayor, was they, 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 they went to the police, fire, and ambulance and made sure that there was enough of them. Yeah. In the 60s, before development came into the community, and then all of a sudden, what happened? All of that disappeared. Today, developers can come into any community and disrupt the community, and no need to worry about the police, fire, and ambulance. It's us, the community, that have to worry about those those people. Yeah. Why is that, Mr. Mayor? Well, that's I, my I'm question. Not so, James, I'm not so sure that's accurate. So no, that is go, accurate, yeah. Mr. Mayor. I'm yeah. 77 years old. Yep, we're the same age. Well, I've been living here since all of this time, and all I've seen, and I've been coming to this uh, to, the, the, to the city council for many years, 
And I can tell you, every district that I've seen, I have never seen any developer. Okay, I get it. Made but enough police, fire, and ambulance to any of the development they can. So all I've seen is lack of police, fire, and development, uh, even the schools. So okay. that's the biggest problem I've seen all of the communities have. So how can we correct this? Uh, it would be time. nice to see this happen, that when so, somebody comes and develops in our community, right. make yeah, sure well, that we yeah. have all of this and James, coverage. I don't want to take anything away from what you're saying, but urban planning is pretty sophisticated. Let me have Dawn take a shot at this, okay? Yeah, aloha, Mr. Monaco. Um, so part of the process that DPP oversees is when there's new developments or even when people come in for a building permit, it is routed through the various agencies, whether it's HPD or HFD, to ensure that the resources are there to support the development in general. Um, and I think that, you know, part of it is... Because we make a lot of money. Yeah, so, so that, but that is the process that we try to ensure that there are sufficient resources like fire, ambulance, et cetera, when developments are made. Um, I don't know if maybe it's the perspective that you don't see as much um, services, but I, I, that is part of the process, even at the city council, right? When you're there and you see some of Look these at projects. Wainai. We have a beautiful mm -hmm. police station. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough police in there. Right, so that's a res that might be a resource issue, a staffing issue that we're working on as well uh, that other um, agencies can speak to. How long we had them? Yeah. Well, James, we just said a little while ago, we're addressing that now. We're addressing it on a couple of levels. One, the build out of the building. As Mike said, we have to put an air conditioning in there, but also we're doing a lot in the recruitment of our police officers. We're just, so I've, we're, 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 we're trying, man. You know what? We're trying, okay? Yeah, know, we're, down, we're, we're down 40. Without, without uh, right now, we currently have 1,800 police officers. Yeah, I just want yeah. to add something, and I haven't. I these haven't guys checked. work hard. I mean, I mean, we, we uh, these guys really work hard. Yeah, I want to respond, and I haven't had a chance to talk to police and fire tonight. But I'll tell you, my personal observation is similar to yours: that as we develop communities, we don't necessarily keep up with the core services that serve those communities, and we need to do a better job of doing that. And I'm not going mean, to use the, I'm not going to use the Y and I community as an example because I think you know that much better than me, but I'll just give you an example that we're all very aware of, and that's if you go downtown Honolulu and Kaka'ako, they have built 40-story buildings all over the place, and yet we don't have more fire trucks with the capacity to reach the upper floors. So it's the same thing in Waianae as it is in Kaka'ako. We need yeah, to do a I better wrote, job. I wrote an ambulance from Waiwa, right. and I live in Makaha. Right, so I'm, I'm just telling you, we understand the problem, and we need to do a better job, and we're committed to do that. And one of the ways that we need to do it is that when it goes to city council and they talk about community benefits that the developers have to give back to the community, we should start looking at community benefits for first responders. Wow. So I think it's a no, great good question. question. It's a great it's question. A great question. Something better than yes. that. Because, wow, we're hurting. Well, we're talking about trying to solve the problem. You hear what Mike said. So we're not in disagreement with what you're saying, but I don't know, as Don told you, <laughs> well, James, thank you for the question. Senator. Good evening, Mayor. Representing my family in the Valley, I have the concerns. One of the concerns is not to repeal Act 73. When I was part of the Land and Water, we had enacted Act 73 to protect the families in this area from PVT. PVT is a recycling establishment, not a landfill. But they decided not to expand the recycling system and decided to just bury everything because it's cheaper. Repealing Act 73 would be more devastating in not passing Bill 39 on the repealing of us family members not paying land tax in the area to compensate all the illness that they had over the years. You already know because we talked about this before. Some members of you have talked about the 10 years less in the 1.5 mile radius 
on people's lives. Regular people in Honolulu area, 72, 82, over here 10 years less. Going forward, if you're gonna close Waimanalo Gulch in 2028, and you're gonna repeal Act 73, it takes five to eight years for a landfill. You guys already know that, that's the problem we're having. By doing that, PVT is gonna be the area, and then you guys are gonna have to force to expand. And I know community members came and talked to you at other community meetings, and you was very receptive to them. My family told me that you was. But I had a uh, bill to put in a waste, a real waste to energy plan. Age power is not a waste to energy plan. Everybody said we don't want off Opala. Of course, we cannot put nothing at the plant because they don't let you throw away ice boxes, bed frames. They tell you what you can take to age power. It's not a complete recycling. The waste to energy plant will solve with a lot of issues that we don't need. We won't need a landfill. Period. So eight to ten years, four years, four years of completion of the waste to energy plant. We have the land. The state has the land. The state has the land for it, but we just need somebody to pull the trigger. So, Mayor, this is something that I bring to you and your administration. If you guys are willing to pull the trigger, I'm pretty sure my colleagues at the state would help you guys with the land. Yeah, thanks, Senator. Uh, so, um, right now we're not uh, we're not planning to try to repeal Act 73 necessarily. Um, the idea, the idea that we're working on now is to try and work with the legislature to perhaps carve out um, so, uh, an exception or something to to uh, free up some possibilities for us. Um, a repeal um, doesn't really make sense. There's a reason why that you know, why that act was passed. So uh, that's maybe, I think, our response to that. Or Yeah. yeah Senator, uh, I just want to make sure it's very clear to the audience, we've never proposed repealing Act 73. The word repeal has never come out of our mouths. We have talked to a couple of senators about the possibility of some amendment that would allow certain sites that we know are not over the aquifer but do violate Act 73 to be considered and none of those are on the YNI coast. And even if we did carve out some exception under Act 73, the mayor has committed that we will not come back to the YNI's coast. So that's absolutely Thank for you. sure. I promise Thank you. you that. Thank you. But, but I just want the community to understand we have two options. Nothing is left, left that does not violate the Board of Water Supplies No Pass Zone or Act 73. We have no option but to do one or the other. We're either gonna put it over the aquifer or we're gonna get an exception to Act 73. But in either case, it's not going to be on this coast. That commitment, the mayor's made it and we're not gonna change. So the, the reason why I bring this up, Mayor, Makakilo, <clears throat> um, quarry is gonna be done pretty soon. There's a big hole over there. Makakilo put people in the community, couple of people is afraid same like how they didn't want to take it down to um, Kipapa Quarry. That was something that way before you was even mayor talked about. But we had a chair of the city council named of Ikaika Anderson and wasn't going to happen under his watch. But that was the area that everybody, everybody that did the whole this panel that they had, choose them, number one. Never happened. So going forward, I understand all of the restrictions that they have. No more on the Waianae side or any side from Waipahu to Makaha. Because if they try to do the quarry over there, it's the same problem you're going to have. But really, really, I'll tell you guys We're why. We're good on that. We're yeah. good. Okay. We're, and we've had conversations yeah. with the quarry, just so you know. All right, thank you. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So before you came in, and I have great respect for who you are, I said no speeches up here. But because <laughs> it's you, go ahead. Oh, shucks. One more question. No, yeah, no, I know. no. This I know. is you not missed, mine. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. Sorry, sorry. All right. I'm going okay. to okay. give you this. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to give it to you so you can have it. <laughs> anything else? Sorry. Right. Let me sorry just Roger, that. anything else you want to say? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about waste energy. So, um, uh, our department, we of course collect collect all the rubbish and um, then of course we have to deal with it. And um, you know, so currently, you know, we have H power and um, we do convert the waste to energy and ash. We can't burn everything. Um, 
the main function of H power is to reduce the volume of the rubbish, the Opala, to only 10% of what it is before you burn it. Um, and that makes the disposal um, a lot more, a lot easier, right? There's less material to dispose. Um, we currently have a in, in, in design and in permitting now, we've submitted our permits to Department of Health for an ash recycling project where we would then recover um, about 80% of the ash, so further reducing the amount of material that we have to dispose of. With respect to all the other things that are not burnable, there's recyclable materials, and we continue to advance you know, how much recycling we can do on the, uh, on the residential municipal solid waste side. The construction and demolition is another thing. That's, you know, that's not our kuleana right now. Um, but we continue to try to minimize the need, you know, the need for a landfill. Um, there's always going to be some things that you, we're either going to have to put in a landfill uh, or somehow ship to the mainland like we do hazardous waste. It's very, very expensive, um, and we all pay for it. So w w all these solutions uh, that, that happen, we have, to, we have to somehow pay for it, right? And it's coming out of taxes. So just know we're doing everything, everything we can, including and in looking at all of the new technologies that come out. And so whenever the new technology folks come to us and say they'll do something for free, we say, bring us the proposal. And if it's really free, uh, we're interested. Um, but really, you know, there's no such thing as free, right? I mean, it, it just doesn't work that way. Um, there's always going to be a tipping fee uh, with, any, with any kind of process. Uh, somebody has to collect money to be able to do the processing. So anyway, just know we continue, Senator, to look into all the, all the opportunities, possibilities. Just the last one about the, um, you guys have an orange fence asking it to be removed, the temporary orange fence by Nanakuli residents for fishing and enjoying the beach. Native Hawaiians should be, have access to the beach. So I'm not sure if it, oh. That, is that UK Hill? Yep. And then. Here we go, Mayor. Yeah, the, the fence was for our park closure for Uliaba uh, Beach Cleanup, which started oh. uh, last week. I believe mahalo to Council Member Tupola's office for supporting us with that cleanup. Um, I think the closure was ended oh. yesterday, so the fence will be coming down. Oh. We do want to actually use that and recycle it for future work, but it should be coming down. While we had the closure, though, we did have access areas because... Uh, people right. could still traverse and fish and whatever. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you Mayor. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate the questions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You have encouraged me to come to the uh, town hall meeting. I've watched all of you on television, and I says this is the first time that we can come and people are listening. My concern is what's probably your name? very what's your, what's frivolous your for you. Name, man, man. My name is Donna Awana. I am a graduate of Waianae High School. I've lived on the local side of the island for practically all of my life, except for 20 years that I lived on the mainland. And after my husband passed away, I came back home and we bought a, uh, uh, before he passed away, he bought a home in Makakilo. He passed away and I found myself living with my mother in Nanakuli again. And I said, Nana Kuli, here I am, you know? But it's home. And all of the things that I find that my mother was concerned about on living on a young homestead road, the home that she bought in 1964 with my dad, is still relevant today. And like I say, it might be very frivolous to you, but it is of concern to me. And the first issue, and I heard this on the um, uh, police addressed it, that they don't have enough police officers to monitor the safety checks and the registration. So I did. And my, on my way to Tamura's store, I says, I'm going to take 15 cars and I'm going to check how many don't have safety checks. Donna, I don't want to cut you short. First of all, we know the statistics. We know how many registrations have expired, how many safety checks have not been done. We have all of those numbers. We know how many cars are on the road. We know all of that. 
Yes, I know you do, but it's still the same situation. Okay, we were addressing it, but what's it, your question? My question is, when will we address it? Because I feel sometimes if I don't pay my registration and safety That's check, funny. I can get away with some money. Yeah. You know, so. Um, yeah, except the potential. But I would be the first to get ticketed. Well, it's, it's also the potential liability that you run. That's right. You know, and, we, we, and, and it's we, a weapon. The car, it's not that worth you, it. the car that you're driving without a registration and safety check is a weapon. But my point is that most of these people that are driving without safety check and, and registration, they are the hazards on the road. And my second concern is that on a young homestead road since 1964, my aunts, my cousins who live all on that road have petitioned, have voiced concern of putting safety bumps because it's a, it's a very hazardous road. I ask that whoever is in charge of that, not just a young homestead road, but the roads that are really busy should be looked at. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donna. Uh, you know, I think that might be it. the Homestead Road. I don't know if it's Ed, if it's you, Roger. Who wants to take a shot at that, putting speed bumps? You gonna go out tonight and do it? Good. Ed Wood. Ed Wood, yes. Uh, and uh, if it's a state road, uh, you know, we will work with Ed yeah. uh, to, to get, and we've done a lot on the coast already in terms of speed humps and I have to give a shout out to the, you know, to the State Department of Transportation, to Ed Sniffen, to who has been uh, our partner in helping us get uh, speed humps put in, not in three or four years, but in three or four months in some cases. Yeah. So uh, we're, we've been put, we've put a lot in. In some of the roads out here that we want to put uh, more speed control in, we need speed cushions, which are a little bit different. They're more forgiving to fire trucks, to buses, uh, and to those things, and we are actively looking at, at several projects here. Uh, but I'll, t I'll take your information down too, and make sure my team, uh, yeah. you know, includes that. Again, uh, we 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 do it in a in a, uh, down here because so many of the roads are on on state property that we work very closely with the State Department of Transportation. So, Donna, that means partners. we're going to get your specific contact information, and we'll follow up with you on that. You know, I don't know how many, if you know how many streets are on the island of Oahu. These are things you get in touch with when you become mayor of the team. And I, I'm not going to throw it out for a guess. I'll just tell you, we have more than 8,000 streets on the island of Oahu. More than 8,000 streets. If, if we did nothing else but just try to fix the potholes and pave and everything else, it would be a Herculean task just on that alone. So, and it's, it's not a perfect world out there. But I, I do think... I do think um, there's been an incredible increase in putting in speed bumps of late, unlike anything I can ever remember. And so there's a real sensitivity there in trying to keep everything safe, especially in neighborhoods. But we'll get your contact information. We will follow up. And James, we will follow up with you as well. Okay? We will do that, sir. All right? Go ahead. Remember what I said at the beginning? We're just going to tell you folks the truth. It may not be what you want to hear, but we would rather be truthful and as honest as we can be. Okay? Sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Bobby Carrick. And first off, thank you folks for all your commitment and hard work. Um, I just have a simple question on behalf of the racing community. Um, yes. What does our future look like or what does it hold as far as a county owned facility and a venue for okay. us? Okay. Who wants to take the shot at that? I, Mike will take it. I'll talk about it too because I appreciate the question, Bobby. I think it's come up at every town hall meeting. This guy sitting here is behind all of that. We know that, but that's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. So um, we're actively working with the Navy to acquire property. Uh, it's called Bracklands. You might have heard that before. But it's basically excess Navy land at Kalailoa that is being made available to the city and county. And we want to use a part of that land for a county racetrack. That's the goal. And Lee Cobian has been working very closely with us to help us through that process. The goal right now is uh, to take title within the next, I'm being very optimistic, 30 days to this property. Part of the challenge is, is that before the Navy turned over title, they located PFAS on the property. And we were very fortunate 
the mayor and I working with the Navy, the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, we said if we take this land before the extent of the PFAS is known, if PFAS ends up on the circular list and there has to be work to remove it, will you agree to do that versus us? And the Navy wrote us a letter and said yes, I think it's the first time they've ever done this, the Navy wrote us a letter and said yes, that they would continue to be responsible after title came to the city. So we're moving forward with taking title to that property and then we'll go through the planning process to see how quickly we can get a racetrack built. And where Lee is helping us is Lee is, is uh, identifying some grants that are out there that we might be able to get from the federal government that would help us get through the planning and the design and construction process as quickly as possible. But we're committed to build this for the community. Bobby, and I want to underscore it. We are committed to building it. We need it. We should have it. We know that there are thousands of car enthusiasts. Part of the thing that's been great about working with the Navy is they want it for their servicemen as well to come over because most of those guys are car enthusiasts as well. It's a great opportunity for them. Lee, go ahead. All right, I just want to say thanks again for the motorsports people for coming. I really appreciate it. Now, um, a lot of you guys came because there's still people who are trying to get a private track to own. And so this is the reason most of these guys came because they want to emphasize, we want this track, park, motorsports park to be like the neighbor islands under the city and county, a public track that not one person is the owner controlling everything. Are, are, are you guys good with that? Okay, because an entity just got a $130,000 grant to look for a place for a possible track, for a private track. Okay, now, we have a commitment from the mayor. We have the property. I'm, I am working right now on a grant, $20 million, that's specifically for recreational uh, purposes. It says community support facilities near, near a military installation to enhance uh, support facilities including recreational parks and that's including also motorsports activities. Uh, I don't want to get too into, um, but last year the, uh, the Department of Defense put some of their uh, defense money into public recreations for locations near military for uh, public family use and military use. And so that, that's the, we're going to be applying for that $20 million. The way, is, the way the application eligibility is written, I couldn't make it any better to get it. It was just, it's, it's insane. So I want everybody to understand because that's the big issue. Are we going to get a private track or a public track? Are we going to try again for parcel nine or the feedlot or maybe somewhere out here? That's what everybody has to understand and support a public county park like the one in Maui, the one in um, Big Island, and the one in Kauai. And I just want to emphasize, if you guys need any information, you know how to get in touch with me. Okay? I appreciate right, Lee, it. Lee Cobian. Lee Cobian. Thank you. Can I, can I, I'll just, one final word. You can have it. Thank you, Bobby. One final word. There's an entity that is supposedly, and I don't want to, no, just so you know, we're operating on a parallel track. There are some guys who claim they've put up $125 million. I attended the meeting at Par Hawaii to build one in Campbell Industrial Park. They had to come up with another three to four hundred million. It's big money. Been a lot of talk, we'll see. They said they have the money, whatever. That would be a separate deal. And what they want is to go over to the public. We're not relying on that, but I'm just letting you know that we're going full steam ahead. Mike said we're working with the Navy. We've identified the BRAC lands. We're doing everything we can at the highest level. That is all real, okay? And so just know that, all right? And the last thing I'll say, just, just anecdotally before you, in our town halls, all last year, the last 11 and throughout even up to tonight, our seventh town hall of the year, one of the real common denominators, even though every area, every district has different concerns, how people play, the things that they do for recreation, the meaning and the value of parks and programs is constant, and we get that, and that's, we're trying to do everything we can to add joy to our communities and hope for our communities by making these things become a reality. It's that, I know you see it as a racetrack, we see it much bigger than that, okay? Just know that, and we, and we, and we want to do that. We really want to make that happen.
Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Blessing Star Dela Cruz. I'm up here on a personal level, actually not political, but I do want you guys to give you guys self clapping hands because you guys are doing great. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor, I really like you. I hope you run for the next level. But um, I'm up here as a person. I'm just trying to be level. mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy being mayor. We're hoping to get another four years here. This, this is a great gang of people. Go ahead. Um, I want to address actually the issue of homelessness. I need to correct some of you guys. It's not homelessness, it's houselessness. Yes. Majority of our people that are on the beach and not without houses. And we need to address that, especially with the low housing thing. And we don't want to push them out into where empty homes are because then that comes legality for the federal offenses come along and at city and county level. So I don't know where you guys terminology is with, with the legal law people. I don't know which one. No, the, the term houseless is actually more correct. Correct. Because I know, right. especially in a community like this, because I've met with a lot of people, they'll tell mm -hmm. you, though, you know, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not homeless. I don't have a house. Right. Okay. I am part of this community, and I want to stay in this Correct. community. We're addressing. It. Look, I, I just got back from Washington D.C. last night. I mm. went there as part of a task force of mayors. I was invited to go because of the work we're doing here um, to ask for more money. I had my hand out for fifty-two million dollars more over the last couple of days. Fifty-two million. Fifty-two million more. Can we address it more. to the house? Yes. House all, this? all that's going to go can to that. We also can have um, mental health issues be addressed. We know that. that there are criminal yes. uh, activities that's on the rise on yes. this side of the, the portion, so our community don't need to react and count on to we're, continue we are privately. More, uh, we are, we are so aware of this, and we're doing everything we possibly can. We can't build fast enough. We're hoping in collaboration with the state that we will get more mental health facilities. We've already opened up the first ever in Hawaii. We're about to do that again a second time for another 27, maybe 30 beds in a building that we just bought, the old First Hawaiian Bank building on Baratania. We've got a core mobile crisis unit, which we want to expand the service. And we, whereas it is, we come out here. We, we're doing things differently than before, but we can't. We can't do it fast enough, and we can't seem to do enough. Can we have more enough. on this side? Because the majority of our community here are connected to families here, and we like to yes. stay closer here. Yes, they want to here. stay here. We don't want to go Honolulu, no. and we don't want to service there in Honolulu. No, we're not this interested in doing that either. We understand that. And we're not. In, uh, I understand you went to Washington, but Hawaii, Hawaiian, Hawaii, locals are different from Washington upstates. Yeah, but that's yeah. where the money was. I, 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 I went, I, here was my attitude, and I said, I it, and they know this. I said, if they're giving out money in Washington, D.C., I don't want Hawaii to be in the back of the line. That's why right. I went. I didn't, I didn't want to go. This guy here kicked me in the butt to go. Thank you. I said, if you think I feel like flying in an economy for two days to go all the way to Washington and come all the way back, but we did that. I'm telling you, we're going to do everything we possibly can. Awesome. I promise you that. Okay. Now, the federal yeah. funding comes from the federal housing and all that, right? Correct? Now, is that uh, different from the state? Because I don't want the city and county to be butting heads with the state. No, we're not butting heads. We're collaborating with the state. The state has a couple of things going for it because the Department of Health is lodged in the state. They have access to monies and resources. The governor has implemented a tuition repayment plan up to $50,000 a year so they can hire medical health clinician practitioners. They awarded 492 just in December. We have the, we're combining our resources in facilities, ability to pick up people, take them somewhere, and then be able to treat them. That's what we're doing now. Okay. And we're doing it very aggressively. But there's so much to be done. It's, it's you know, good. Sam. Yeah. Aloha. Aloha. It's Sam Moku. Um, to just kind of um, dovetail on what Mayor uh, said, um, you know, my partnership with John Mizuno, who's the state uh, homeless coordinator, we're working side by side. But I want to tell all the people on the west side, before we do anything on the west side, we're going to come ask permission first. Okay. Thank you. So just because you know we can doesn't mean we cannot just come over here and run over everybody, right? So 
we're going to make sure, and I'll make sure that John knows that, that when we come out here and we do some project, a shelter, or whatever we need to do with drug rehab or other projects, we're going to make sure we let you guys know first. And that's, I think that's the most important part. But we are, the state has the money. They got choke money. And that's where we're going to get our support from. Okay? Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, Sir. David Corona, I'm on the uh, long-time resident, neighborhood board member. Uh, I sit on the uh, housing and uh, oh, great. transportation committees. Thank you, um, David, for doing that. So um, I'm, I'm going to be as fast as I can here because I know we've got plenty of people gonna, here. You're not going to read the book. You're going to get no, to a I'm question. Get, see, see, it's I not it. that much, okay. is it? Okay. Uh, no, it's not that much, right. sir. Go ahead. So I just want to say for government, I used to work for the government. I retired from the government because I got tired of the bureaucracy. So I'm currently, I've been stuck in the DDC DTS and DFM loop, okay, and it's, it's a little frustrating, so, but we're working on it, okay, but um, street light engineer, have you heard that term before uh, with the city? So we, there's a lot of us here that live in Maile, and we've been asking for years, over a decade, to have a left-hand turn signal on one of the streets out there. State finally agreed to it, state's finally going to put it in, but they said, oh, wait, we can't do it because we need the street light engineer from the city to come out here and do it. Uh, set it up. So, so that's. Well, you, I know you didn't get to that. So, all my most of the must us DTS tonight. So, I want to address that. Um, that's that's my my question. Can, can I answer that one right now? I I okay. got the email today. Okay. <laughs> from the state. Okay. Asking for that, and we've got it in process already. Okay. So we'll, within a week, we'll have a we'll have a, we'll have a left hand turn signal. It's safety, man. We're, it's it is a safety. It it doesn't. It's not quite as easy as as that is. But we're gonna work with Robin. Robin contacted me today. Okay, all right. He's on record, he's on television okay. saying this, live TV. <laughs> okay. um, Opticom, Opticom. Now, um, out on the neighborhood board, one of the uh, residents brought up issues with the HFD having a hard time coming out. As you know, HFD is located within the homestead. And uh, to exit out during an emergency, uh, during high traffic volume times, they cannot make a left-hand turn or get onto Farrington Highway right. without that a, a functioning Opticom device. I spoke to the yes. State Department of Transportation who uh, confirmed that the device is transmitting as it should. However, the actual device is with inside the vehicle, which may not be working. What I'm asking right. is, what is it going to take to be able to get them to be able to activate the Opticom, get the left hand, get the, the, the light to change so they can make a left hand okay. or right hand to get on Farrington? That's a good question. Yeah. Sir, read. David, aloha. So um, as far as the HFD and that turn in that area, um, you know, the Opticom, I'm sure, would enhance it. But regardless if that is working or not, we're going to take every single safety precaution. So we're going to make sure that it's completely clear that there's no pedestrians, um, that the cars aren't coming. We do have our sirens and our horn that we will make sure that everybody is safe and, and, and at the same time respond um, expeditiously. And let me let me add a little bit more too. Uh, that one of the projects that we're doing uh, right now, we're doing it in collaboration and cooperation with the State Department of Transportation, is we're going to be replacing over 900 intersection traffic controllers with new, uh, up-to-date, state-of-the-art. Some of our traffic controllers are 25 years old, and they don't have the the capabilities that the newest ones have. One of the ways that we can deal with uh, uh, Opticom type treatment is that we're going to change. We're looking at changing the architecture in the way we do that, using uh, GPS instead of because uh, Opticom is a straight line device. And when a fire truck or uh, leaves a, a fire station, ideally what you want to do is you want to know what that path of travel for the fire truck is going to be. Uh, and, and so uh, we have had discussions with the chief uh, and others uh, with, uh, with, you know, to look at that. We're doing it in cooperation with the state. Also for, for, uh, for this coast, you know, most of our traffic signals uh, beyond Kapolei are not connected traffic signals at this point. Uh, but we have uh, another project where we're going to be extending our connected traffic signals that go back to our joint traffic management center. Uh, we're going to be going through uh, a process right now with the state to extend our uh, our fiber optics all the way down to Makaha. Uh, and while we do that, 
it's easy for us to add on uh, high-speed wireless internet connections, which we're going to make sure that all of our, uh, our, our towers on the beaches have better access through uh, high-speed Wi-Fi uh, and all the beaches and all the public facilities. So that's, our, that's the project that we are just undergoing right now. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, cooling project, Maili, I went out there for Earth Day. Um, the trees are great out there. Thank you very much. I hope they grow quickly and get lots of shade, so thank you. And Mayor, one final thing for DPP. Um, on the Housing Zoning Committee, um, one of the big things we like to do is we like to make sure we are abreast, we're aware of the rules, the, of, of, of the revised ordinances to be able to address developers coming in and wanting to build properties and like addressing the HFD, the water, electric, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm asking is, Mayor, can the DPP provide a briefing on like zoning and, and what's the processes for developers so the, the neighborhood community members or the people that sit in the committees can be more abreast of what's going on and that way we can help you help us be able to make proper decisions. When well, what would work for you? How would that look? What would that look like? Don's nodding her head. Yeah. So what it looked like is, you, is, is DPP providing a brief to us and explaining to us, that I'm a developer. I want to develop something. I'm going to come in your neighborhood. This is what I got to do. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I, sit on the, I sat on the sustainability plan CPAC as a CPAC member. And one of our biggest things was the check mark. A developer has to come in and just talk to the neighborhood board. As long as that check in the box is done, they just keep on going through. So I want to be able to um, li liaison with the DPP and be able to bring critical issues up that the community has and make sure it does just not that check box okay. that it can be addressed. And I want training on it. So can you provide training or someone from your department provide training to the, uh, the community or during a committee meeting? Yeah, I mean, I think that's very important. We're trying to be more educational and provi provide awareness about what we do and how projects come through, what are the requirements, et cetera. So I think that's something that's part of what we're trying to do as a department, whether it's, um, you know, we can talk about where, at what, what forums, et cetera, but even at the council committee hearings, right, they often have informational briefings. So um, I would tune in to those or even ask your council member, maybe you want a specific uh, informational briefing from DPP uh, on a specific. I got a better idea. Why don't you just come back and work for the city? <laughs> yeah, we, we said earlier we're recruiting. I, I, we're I recruiting, baby. To, I want her to come out to the community uh, yeah. and talk to us. Yeah, you're That's a smart guy, want, David. So. You're a smart guy. I appreciate the questions. Can Thank I, you. So I can work with you. Then I can. Sure. Sure. Can yeah. If you have specific, we'll follow up. Pro, yeah. Don't definitely. get your cut, David. Thank you. That was a lot of stuff for like that three lines you had scribbled there, <laughs> sir. How are you? <laughs> Aloha, Mayor and staff. Mahalos for your efforts in managing your program responsibilities. I know it's a tough job. What's your name, sir? My name is Gaylord Dishimura. I grew Gaylord. up in Waihawa and Wailua. I resided in Punchbowl, Pearl City, Aiea. I came out to Nanakuli in 74 when I was employed at Barbers Point Crash Rescue. Wow. The reason why I chose to come out here was it was cheap then to buy a house. Mm -hmm. What I'm afraid of is that one day I'll, I'll become homeless because I cannot afford the land tax. I'm not sure if there's any efforts being taken into consideration about managing the land tax for long time residents in Hawaii. We're all gonna be affected by it. We lost our lands before when the queen was trying to manage it. I mean, till, till today I see Hawaiians cannot even afford to purchase Hawaiian homelands because they don't make enough money. And when I was growing up in Wailua, the property values went up. People who retired couldn't afford it. They had to sell. I see every so often in a newspaper, people get foreclosed because they cannot pay the land tax. I'm thinking, when I see, I walk down the beach, I see older people over there, I'm wondering, am I gonna be the next guy on the beach because the values are going up because of people out of state coming in, buying the property? It affects all of us. What I'd like to see, you know, President Trump says, he like America be America again. I want to see Hawaii be Hawaii again. Okay. A Hawaii where police officers don't get shot at. Kopunas is respected. Uh, Gaylord, you raised something that's very serious. It's a great question, and it's a real concern. And Andy Kawano, Director of Budget and Fiscal Services, he handles a lot of tax stuff. 
Why don't you? Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Gaylord, um, thank you for, the, for your comments and questions. Um, I think it's important that you know that the tax system is a complicated system. And the uh, information that we use to do the valuations um, are sales, property sales, because it's, it's readily available and we can independently validate it when we put it in the system. But you're right, because the land is scarce, you know, we don't have enough parcels for homes uh, and we have high demand, the prices go up. And, it, and the prices went up right after COVID, right? Because interest rates were low and demand was high and prices went up. So I think it's important that um, um, you um, make sure that you get you have your exemption, homeowner's exemption. Yeah, I applaud you for that, but yeah. it's not enough. And do you, are you doing your low income tax credit? You, you I'm not sure about that. Thanks please so. call us. I'll, I'll give you uh, my phone number because I want to make sure you're, you're applying for that because what that does is it caps how much tax you pay, real property tax you pay, based on your income. I know veterans, so, they're exempt from that if they... Veterans have, a, have their own exemption. Uh, vet veterans, uh, there's a handicap exemption, yeah. and so on. So you have to... What about the old, sure. the old timers like me? We get so many. You guys going to be there next. You're here at grade two. <laughs> I, I'm there already. <laughs> you will be. Uh, when yeah. you retire... Gayla, because yeah, yeah. we only have 25 minutes left. Let's set you up with Andy. Let's see if we can I'll, do I'll everything get you a number. we can. He'll, get, he'll, get, he'll get with you now. I, I'll help you. One day something happens. I, I count in on you guys. You guys are talented people. That's why you guys work for us. That's right. Thank you, Gail. All Gaila. I know is Hawaiian values is accepted around the world. People like Hawaiian values. I agree. And if we do, we take care of people, we take care of land, we take care of water, our life would be much easier. We take care of each other. That's right. Thank you. I agree. Thank you, Gail. Yes, ma'am. Aloha. I'm Kalei Saucedo. This is why I stand in front. It's my kupunas and the future of our children. I fight for them because they cannot afford. They are being forced to choose whether to pay the bills, the medication. How do they get food? Believe me, I see that every day. You can ask my husband. I'm at the store, a kupuna put him back bread. Little small bag, rice, sugar. I tell the cashier, put it in, I'll pay for it. Whatever they grab, I'll pay for it. It's called aloha. And you don't get that nowadays. I want to embrace, embrace you folks. You folks all in office. We need you folks' help as much as you need our help. Because we are the one that's voting. Okay? I would like to see you folks come up more before voting times come out. You know? We're up here, I'm up here talking for the kupunas and the future generation of the children because that rail, my grandchildren and their children are gonna pay for it. They're gonna be paying for it. I will not be able to help my kids to afford to send my grandchildren to college because I already spent enough money sending them to be self-sustainable. The okay, reason so I'm what, here- So what is your question? My question is, I hope the city and the state can do an MOA work and address the homeless, houseless, whatever you want to call it, because it's, it is negative impacting all of us, okay? And we all got to pay for it. It's not just the city and state, it's the taxpayers. We got to pay for it. I'm here because we don't have our voice in our side. We have lame ducks in our state office, lame ducks. They know the issue we face. I get more outcome with the city than I do with the state. That's the problem. Okay. So if you folks can beat a little hammer and let them know. I can what's promise going you on. we're trying to be a big hammer. Oh, yeah? and, and not all of it is state. Not all of it is state. Not all of it is city and county. There's federal monies to help. It's not all just taxpayers. Right. I said again, taxpayers. that's why I just got back from Washington. There's a lot of federal money. We're trying to grab every dollar we can get. You know, I'll tell you something, two things you may or may not be aware. One, first of all, we're not up here because it's election season. We did this last year and we're doing it now. It just so happens our term is coming up, our first term this year. It has nothing to do with that, okay? 
Secondly, when, we had, when COVID hit, we got federal monies came into the state. There was, and Amy Asselby is here, and, and certainly Cal could talk about this. But we had one of the best programs in the whole country. We distributed over $300 million of federal money to more than 22,000 families, many of whom were in our most needy areas, didn't speak English, didn't have technology, and we were one of the top cities in the country doing it. And we did that, and we figured it out for everything that you just said about who we are as a people. And I got a letter from the US Treasury saying it was the best city, third best city in America doing that. And every chance we've had, and there are other things I could tell you, we're drawing down on every dollar and spending every dollar that we can get our hands on to make it a better place. So we're saying the same thing. I can appreciate your frustration. Hawaii has changed. And we live in a very uncertain world right now. And the amount of fear that's out there is real. And we know that. We feel that every day. But the one thing that I've learned in this job, you can't do it fast enough. You know, and so all I can tell you is we have good plans. We're doing unprecedented things when it comes to housing, when it comes to homelessness what we're trying to do for public safety, what we're trying to do for our beaches and our places where people go and they live. We're trying to do it as best we can. This stuff was decades in the making. And I'm proud of what this team has done in just the last couple of years. And I believe that the best is yet to come. We hear you, we hear that voice. We, we, embrace, we, we know that. I am proud of our first responders we have. Yes. HPD, EMTs, many of our first responders. Yes. I am proud because the negative impact is being put up on them. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I'm proud. And I'm proud of a lot of your officials that I've worked it with because we get the phone call. We get the phone call. We don't sit down and wait. I go to the state capitol. I go to the city hall. You know that. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Mayor, for coming out to Kehau to see the thank negative you. impact we're facing. Yeah, and welcome. I just hope we can get more positive instead of negative. I can tell you this, we're not all here tonight to, to do anything but make it better. I, I don't know how else to say it. I'm going to hold you to that, sir. Hold me to it. Hold and me to it. Thank you. And I know you're two you. right ones. I will hold it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Patty Taroya. Thank you. They gave me the spot. but um, I, I Thank you. Patty Kahanamoku Taroya, thank you so much. Thank you guys for letting me speak. I need to call up, um, God forgives bad boys, bad girls, mana too. This is a whole Patty and mana thing. And what we wanted to do was really thank the um, Mr. Mayor. We wanted to thank the administration. Um, this past March, we had the fifth annual Prince Cohio Festival. Um, thank you to our managing director, Mr. Forby. You are so awesome. Um, and I just kind of, I don't want to forget anybody because we wanted to thank the HPD, um, D8, District D8 um, CPT team that helped us in the community to have this positive event. First time on Kalana Anaoli Beach Park um, to recognize Prince Jonah Kuhio, Kalana Anaoli. And so because this is the largest homestead in the world, we had the opportunity to co-sponsor it with the, the city administration. Um, Fire department, thank you so much to the chief and your team um, for helping us with the permits because in the first time we had a great fireworks show and the community loved it. And so it was, it was bringing people together in this community. When we talk about crime and increase, we need to bring them together in such a positive venue. And it's because of the city and the mayor, um, you know, this, it, it happened. Um, the mayor's cultural and arts uh, department was very helpful. And um, I just want to address everybody that um, next year, 2025, I know you're going to get in office. We're having it on March 22nd, 2025, right, community? Yeah. So we want to continue to celebrate Prince Jonah Kohio on, we want to do that. on um, Department of Hawaiian Homestead land and acknowledge this. I also wanted to aloha um, Lloyd Yoninaka, um, NCO. Um, I served for 29 years on the board and he was very, I mean, missing him because of his personality. His goal to help the board system is just awesome there. So thank you for your team and I don't want to, I got my partner here so I better let okay. him speak a little. Thank you, Patty. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I just wanted to mahalo you, um, um, Uncle Rick. Um, you know, to come out here on the west side and bring your whole team uh, to answer any question that the community has, um, even to the point where you don't even know what the community would ask or how they're going to react and how they're going to behave. So it's a great leader, right? I mean, I, I've, been a, I've been a leader in my past in the world, and to come out here and to hear the concerns from the community is bravery, is bold, right? I never heard of it, of a mayor coming out into not just our community, but in every community. And so, um, you know, I'm so blessed to have you. I was, I mean, the mayor, 
Uncle Rick not only come to the town hall meetings, Uncle Rick actually is on the front lines. Uncle Rick actually walked with us in the CPT program in the neighborhoods. He's on the foot, boots to ground. And so for me, for somebody who is in the bushes, on the trenches, on the highways, and the byways, I take notice of that, Uncle Rick, of who is actually on the front lines, right? Who is actually putting their feet to the ground and walking with the community and giving the community an opportunity to build a relationship, right? And so, hey, Uncle Rick, I get one question but for you since you brought everybody here, Thank right? you, Marta. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> I get this question. And I, I always want to, I said it before a couple of town, town hall meetings, but, you know, for me, for being locked up 26 years and participated in that lifestyle, right? You know, because I do the neighborhood security walk, I said this a few times, but nobody listens, right? Because I understand. I also took a survey, right, from a couple guys that still live on the streets, right? And I told them, if you saw one neighborhood security walk sign, Neighborhood security watch sign in the community. What would you do? You know what they told me? They told me I would split, bro. I wouldn't even stay in that community. So I don't know who can answer that. I said it before because I know it takes money. They got to put the cement in the ground, the pole up. They got to make the signs. It takes money. But the thing is, now, you, you, you're hearing it from somebody who lived that life. from that. Because even me, in my world, when I saw the sign, right, <clears throat> I didn't want to do nothing in that neighborhood, so if you was to invest in these neighborhood security watch signs and put them up in a neighborhood where the community is participating in the walks and maybe in inviting uncle and his staff to participate with the walks and putting these signs up, I can, I can almost guarantee you that you would have less crime in your community because these people is on drugs and the drugs intensifies them Ten times more, so when they see these signs, you're talking from a guy who, who saw these signs before, I left the neighborhood. So I don't know who can answer my questions, you know what I mean? I don't know if we're going to do a fundraiser. I, I, or <laughs> I think we're going to take it on the really, Marta, I'm not kidding, you know me. I'm going to take it on the serious consideration. I, you know what? This would be a great test site to do that. Yeah. I said some provocative things up here tonight yeah. on television, okay? I did. Yeah, yeah. I talked about taking back a community, yeah. we talked about public safety, all of that. And you know, I would be willing to figure out how we could do that just to see if it, if it really can work, because anything we can do would be good. Okay? I, think I, do, I think a good test site would be right here in Nanakoli to yeah, see yeah. if that- Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, amen. I got it. Amen, amen. amen. I love amen. it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, amen. take care. Thank, Thank you, Marno. Thank you. Thank you both for those kind words. Thank you. Thank Aloha, you. I'm Aloha. Chris Everett. I am the executive director for uh, Project Nihimaya Hawaii and also a pastor at International River of Life Christian Center with Pastor Eddie Romo and Stella. Um, this, this year is the second year that we are holding a free hope awareness community event over at Nanakuli Village. I invited you, but you said no. So what when, we are when, doing... When is it? August 17th. Coming over at the at Nanakuli. It's coming up. How do you know I said no? Because I got your email. That's okay. not from me. <laughs> I invited you. I invited a lot of dignitaries. Okay. So we have many dignitaries and many representatives that is coming in support. What are we doing? What are we bringing awareness to? The elephant in the room. Sexploitation and human trafficking. My question is, can you verify in 2021, 64% of tips that was called in, zero prosecution. And out of that 64%, 46% is in the families, is in the homes in Hawaii. Can you verify that in, not a, in Waianae, that it is a hub for human trafficking? Can you verify that last year, the ending of October, there were children that was found in the container of Waianae Valley Road? Can you verify? Mayor. Do you know about these things that is taking place here? On I know, the I know that sex trafficking is very real. Okay. I don't know the percentages like you just said, okay. but I know it's something that's very, very wrong with our society. Okay. Okay? I, c I come out to the wine. I live in uh, Waikele. I come out here on Wednesdays, three in the morning to come do prayer with our women's home who came out of prison, who's uh, uh, restoring from um, their lifestyle. There are prostitutes. Not one, not two, but I saw four over by the Sack and save, out there, prostitutes. And I've been seeing them more and more and more, and those things are not being addressed. So can you verify that human trafficking, I was just told two weeks ago that Hawaii is now, the United States has become the number one, on the Waianae Coast it has become 
The number three in human trafficking. Thank you. Well, I can promise you this. We're going to look into that statistic. Not that the statistic matters, because we know it goes on. But that's the first time I've heard Hawaii is number one. That's the first time. Sir. I'm just eating papers. So I don't have to answer. I just answer. Anybody here from the, I'm sorry. Anybody here from uh, DPP or the prosecuting attorney's office? The director of DPP is right here, Don oh, Takeuchi Apuna. I'll give you one, two. Nobody's here from the prosecutor's office. Not from the prosecutor's office. Who would you like? No, because uh, the document, if you read the document, I would have to give a copy at least to the prosecuting attorney's office. I can office. make sure Steve Arm gets okay. this. Okay, and then the state attorney general's office. So my only question really pertains to this program that's in nationwide. Hawaii doesn't have it, but they have it on Maui. They have it on the island of Hawaii. I'm being passionate. My name is Paul Ayo, former law enforcement officer, HPD. I retired from King County Sheriff's Department, Washington, state of Washington, for 43 years as a police officer. Veteran, now on the Nanakuli Neighborhood Board, one of the members on the board. I'm in the Education Committee as well as the Public Safety and Health Committee. So the two documents that I presented has to do with a program called the School Resource Officer Program. Maui has it. Matter of fact, uh, um, Tupola called a meeting for us on January 27th. We had a combined meeting with Maui, uh, the high schools here on our side, the West Coast, as well as, um, I believe, the Department of Education, Mr. Hayashi. So I introduced, or not introduced, but I was part of that process of talking about getting the program started. I wish for us, Mayor, that you can get the people in places, the police chief, you yourself, the corporation council, the state attorney general's office, the Department of Education, collaborate, get together, and maybe get our program working. If you, you can run it through OJT, you can run it to every place you, you want in the federal government, it will tell you it works. The recidivism, the recidivism of children getting back into crime goes down. Crime in the cities go down because of juvenile crimes. And that's what it works. It works well in all schools. You know, Paul, about 10 hours ago, I made the same speech you're making right now with Ricky Ellison on the Youth Impact Program, of which a lot of kids from Y9 Nanakuli participated in, about how important it is to do that. What Paul's talking about is police officers who would be in the school and assigned to select schools in certain areas, not every school, they would do three things. They would do law enforcement, obviously law-related counseling, and law-related educational presentations. We'll look at this, and again, I'm not gonna fall back on, on the fact we have a shortage of officers. We have 1,800 officers, we're short some 425 now, I don't know the exact count. But we'll, we'll take a look at this. I promise you that, Paul. Thank you for this, okay? <laughs> Sir, we've Good got, evening. How, what have we got, 10 minutes left? Let me, <laughs> 10's good. Yeah, I'll take up nine. Seven, we have seven left. <laughs> seven left, that's good. Okay, yeah, no, good no, no, we're live TV over here. We're gonna stick around afterwards, though. Okay, Go ahead. Good evening, uh, good my evening. name is Dwayne Bautista. And, Hi, um, Dwayne. I know we talked about Bill 39, and then um, we just wanna make sure we, we wanna push it and try to pass it again. And then uh, two more things. And then, Tell uh, the audience what Bill 39 is. Bill 39. Uh, yeah, into the microphone. They can hear you. Bill 39 was, was, was dealing with, with the landfill. It, 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 it's piggyback with the Act 73, like how Brother Ed talked about it. But i just here to, to let you guys know about the, um, the uh, acres that are out there. If you look at the city and county website, it shows the possible landfills. And if you look at the website, 6,000 acres usable land on the website. On the west coast, from Wamanalo Gulch to the, the end, Makaha or Wainai, we only have 566 usable. So that's something as west side we should look at as taking everything out from the west side. I know the mayor said nothing on the west side, like he said earlier in the beginning, but that's something to look forward to that 
don't don't burn up the 566 that usable is on top of the um the website yeah. that's that's a little okay bit. we and got then, it. and then the last one is um the orange fences yes thank you guys for cleaning up but maybe in the future we can save a little bit of money maybe we put signs every every 200 yards rather than the, the orange fence that cover the beach because as the other beaches that clean then they don't they don't block off the beach that's an eyesore I mean, if you look on the DLNR, it tells you about public land access or yeah. beach access. Yeah. That beach access is supposed to be covered or stopped yeah. only to prevent the vegetation. Or, or yeah. but I see, the, I see, but the positive was for fix. Yes. But on the other end, we can use that money for the orange fence. Maybe we can fix the, the bathrooms out there from, from uh, depots to all the way down. That's something I have to okay. think about for the next cleanup. All right. Thank you. Point well taken. Thank you. Here we go. Sir. Your name and is live, Albert. Yes, and I live out at Wai'anae. My problem is this. Where I live, at the end of Wai'anae Valley Road, they use a little access road that's going up to Kumaipo, right across Pump Station 1, as a garbage dump. Whenever the convenience center gets filled up, okay. they use that road as a garbage dump. They mean people come and use yes. it. The city's not using it. And I called the city. I called your office. They said they would send someone out. They never did. They gave me a bunch of numbers to call, and I called all those numbers, and nobody has come out to clean that. They said that it was a private road, but that road was turned it over to the okay. city. Albert? And nobody came. So how can we get it cleaned? Okay. Great question. Roger. Yeah, so um, I'll get with you after, and we'll see, sure. see, what, we, see what we can do. Um, I know that every once in a while we do clean the road that goes to the convenience center, but it's I think this is a different, it it's a different all road. all the way up to the end of the valley, yeah. and it's going up to the forest reserve. Yeah. The only person that has helped me and has helped the nine people that live up that valley is the bottled water supply. Mm. Everybody else has given a lot of mouth, but no action, including the city and county. Yeah, so um, the, uh, in, in general, what we try to do is, uh, is help sponsor uh, community cleanups, and we will do that. The community cleanup, the one that has helped us the most is walking. Is, from Pine Ridge. Yeah, he yeah. has donated equipment, yeah. time, and hauled away everything and taken it to the landfill. Okay. And yeah. Silva. And Henry Silva. Uh, yeah. Silva From Silva Strong. Okay. Yeah. So we participate. So the way we help on that is that we waive all the fees for the for the landfill. Yes. Um, but basically, we um, you know we don't really have crews that can do, go and, yes. and and do cleanups. Um, so we rely on on community and. Uh, 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 Council Member Tupola, you know, s has sponsored things, and we fully support. Uh, and we'll, Albert will help. In, in Roger, we since we're going to be here, we're not leaving. We have to get off the air. I want to close the program. We'll stay here, Albert. We're going to come back to you. I mean, you can go sit down if you like. We're going to have Mana close out the program. I just want to thank you on behalf of the team for coming out tonight and being with us, giving us your time, giving us your manau. And I, you know, I, I promise you, we came to listen and to answer to the best of our ability. Mana, Pastor Allen, the floor is yours. Well, I want to thank all of you guys for being here tonight. And as you can tell, we got a lot of great people out here in our community that care. Thank you for uh, coming out here. Uh, Mayor, I think we need Lori for uh, an extension on her contract. She's done such a great job to restore hope, bringing all the federal monies here. Major Beckley, HPD, doing a great job. Can you imagine what she can do with more officers and filling that building with more assets? Uh, looking forward to working with Sam, uh, Moku, and, and uh, a lot of great things. Mana mentioned some great things about the sign. Wasn't that a great idea? Here's the deal. Since all your people are here, I'll buy the concrete. I'll dig the holes. I'll buy the poles. I'll get the fence. Just help me get the permits and put it on. All of us can be able to work together and make a kako thing to make Pua Avenue the safest place in this valley for now. So as I said, thank you so much. 
No, I'm going to buy it. We'll buy it all. You guys just sign the paper. Make sure we can do it without breaking the law, right? So, but thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys. Mahalo. Let's close out in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you, uh, Jesus. We thank you for tonight uh, with all the vala'au and mana'o and all the concerns for the, for the people. But God Almighty, we thank you for our great leader, Uncle Rick. We thank you for him, God. We thank you how he goes into the community and he hears the people's concern and how his door is wide open to, to the community and the people, not only here in Nanakuli, but all over the island. So God, we pray blessings upon his life. We pray blessings upon all our leaders right here who can answer every question and every concern in the community. We pray for the people on the west side for coming out and supporting our great leader, Uncle Rick. And God, we just pray for safe travels tonight. Have your way, God. Continue to bless our leadership. Put our Uncle Rick in a, for me another four years in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.